black, and this one is a closed cell, so as you can see, there's no patellofemoral circle in there. Um, so this looks on, make sure it's the right size. Um, so this one is a, what does this one say? This apparently is an extra large. So, as we can say, you know, as I have said before, different brands of different sizes. Medco is probably one of the little cheaper brands that we have. Um, we do have some bigger ones that don't look out. Or we triple, I'm not sure. Uh, down in the football area, I did not bring those up. Like I said, this is a knee sleeve, not quite a thigh sleeve, because well, thigh sleeves are a little different. You can see how they're wider at the top, so the wider end always goes up, or usually you can always look at the logo, and then the more narrow end goes to the bottom. Should fit snugly, but not too tight. And you shouldn't have any gaps at the top or gaps at the bottom because then it's too big. But they need to be able, be able to pull it up, just like our, un, or unlike our hinge braces, so we don't have anything on the side in the case to make sure it's all on the line. Um, I'll show you later if there's a component for moral, always have a circle in it, so you make sure you get the whole thing tell You just have to make sure it's mostly centered as much as possible over the knee whenever you're fitting these guys. So these are the sleeves that we put on. You can also use, um, so I bought a few different sizes, or a couple of different bones, and I bought different sizes so you can tell tomorrow. Um, you can also use the white stretchy compression, um, compression net stockings that I brought up last time for our cap. You can measure the size, cut it, so it's not, uh, not uh, as durable as what our black sleeves are. So these are from our long term use. Our white compression sleeves are going to be for short term. If I'm on the road um, and I need a quick, somebody spray their knee, whatever's going on, lots of swelling, I'll put, I usually have like a roll or a couple of bowls of like white compression wrap. That way I can throw that on them to get them home and tell them either to put them in this or after they see that, whatever might need to happen. If you don't have either of those, especially if you're on the road, we use our ace wrap and we do a compression wrap with our ace wrap. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have you come up and stand. Can this guy move okay? Yeah. Okay. So typically I want to have someone stand because then trying to compression wrap while they're laying down isn't the easiest. So if I can have them stand, I'll have them stand. If they're unable to stand on it, then I'll try and move on the table. Have someone help me hold to elevate them while I wrap. So I'm just going to pull up your pant leg a little bit. This is going to be in my way. Okay. Just like when we're starting with our foot or ankle, we're starting distally and working our way superior or proximal. Okay. So we're going to start a little tighter. Anytime we're using ace wrap um, to hide these tails and it doesn't fall down. So go around once, take that tail, fold it up and over, go around it again. So then you're not going to have that tail slipping out underneath. And this can be for any time we're doing here, or if we're doing thigh wraps, um, hamstring wraps, whatever it might be. Okay, once again, getting a little bit of pressure, but not too tight. We it a little tighter as we work, or looser as we work up the leg. If I feel like I have too much left, I'm going to go pretty loose, start at the bottom again. Once again, come a little bit tighter, work our way up. Wherever we end it, preferably you want to end them on the anterior side or the lateral side. Okay, so if I end him in the middle and he starts walking, it starts to catch it, and that way sometimes the tail can get pulled up again. So we're going to try and finish as much as we can on the front or the side. Then we'll take our shear light, preferably, kind of wrap a couple times around to cover up the tail, and we're good to go. Like I said, this is primarily used for swelling it is not a um so it's not actually going to provide any support like our hinge braces will okay <laughs> uh, go ahead and just sit down for a sec okay so the so all three of those are kind of within our compression wrap slash sleeve so that's our actual wrap our sleeve will be our neoprene sleeve or our white compression that's that thing okay the next one is our adjustable buttress brace. Uh, what are we adjusting a buttress for? Where is a buttress? 
Does anyone know? Yep. Around the patella, correct. So these are kind of our, these aren't adjustable. They only pull one direction. Yeah. So our buttress is some type of padding, half circle or circle that goes around our patella. So you can kind of see this is thicker on the one side compared to the other. And then we're also going to use the straps and this hard plastic piece. Let's see if I can get it. I got it all twisted up now. So we pull that. So besides having the cushioning in there, we're going to use the hard plastic piece, tighten it up once it's on the knee to help hold that patella in place. An adjustable uh, buttress plaid is typically on the inside. It's a Velcro removable strip that you can pull out and you can move it to either the medial side, lateral side, inferior, superior, whatever your issue might be with our, um, with our patella. So it's like when we talked about the McConnell tape job, that we can use our tape to pull the patella in whatever direction we want them to. Same thing kind of is with our adjustable buttress pad. So we either have those or a lot more common if they have multi-directional stability or just like your uh, um, irregular tracking patella, then we have the patella femoral sleeves. Okay, so it's the neoprene sleeve just like our regular sleeve. So it's just adding compression, but then we also have the hole in here for our patella to go into to help try and make sure it's tracking as neatly and nicely as possible. Okay, different so when we fit this one, make sure our patella can fit into the center, but same thing, it's not too tight um, or it's not too loose at the top or bottom. Same thing, the logo should be facing up or a little wider on top, a little more narrow on the bottom. Okay. So I brought a couple of different sizes of those too. You can see this one, I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, this guy has a full circle buttress all the way around. Right, these guys are flat. This guy actually has a thickening padded buttress all the way around. And that's just depending on the brand you buy or and if you actually want that or if you don't want it and how you're applying it to the athlete, whatever their issue might be. Okay. So I did bring a few sizes of those. And then we can try and see if they can fit your athlete or fit your partners. Uh, then we got hamstring and thigh compression wrap. So at that point, we're going to be using our ACE wrap again. Um, it's the same motion. It just depends on which side you actually put your a little bit of an X on. If it's a thigh um, thigh strain, then our X is going to go on the front. If you have more of a hamstring strain, our X is going to go on to the back. Okay, I'll kind of show you. I'm going to have you pull up your pant leg again. Same thing. So we're going to find where our actual muscle strain is. Is it a little bit more medial? Is it a little more lateral? Ask them where does it hurt. Okay. So we're going to say you've got pain right here. I got pain right here. Okay. So, <laughs> so we're going to make sure our wrap starts below it and goes superiorly to where it's actually hurting. Okay. So same thing. I'm going to start wrapping it around. I'm going to use my tail tuck technique. So I'm going to pull medially, okay? I'm going to pull that guy in. I'm going to provide, still pull immediately, but I'm going to come down a little bit, and I'm going to form an X. Okay? And this one, I'm say I'm getting a little bit long, which is fine. Okay, I'm saying, can you guys kind of see that turn this way? So I have a little bit of an X here. Just make sure that X is at least closer or somewhat over where you're having the injured at. And same thing, our tail is ending laterally or anteriorly. Okay? Same thing if we do a hamstring, we just flip them around. If you've got a medial hamstring strain, lateral hamstring strain, the X is going to go over either one of those. And you're still going to try and pull medially. Okay? So let's demonstrate one. You guys can practice both, but whether it's a quad strain, hamstring strain. Um, so if you don't want to sit there and wrap them, I say you can you can sit down. Yeah, <laughs> for now until we do hip wraps. Um, so same thing. If I'm on the road, if 
someone's like, oh, I got a strain, but I think I can be able to go and I don't have sleeves with me, I'm going to go ahead and use an ace wrap because I always keep a couple of ace wraps in my kit. If not, preferably, we have our neoprene thigh sleeves. So just like we have for our knees, we have them for the thighs. And they're universal for sides, so left or right. And the thigh sleeve is universal for a quad or a hamstring strain. Doesn't matter. Okay. We're going to tell a little bit wider. Let me see, this is a, this is a medium, actually. Um, so this is a medium. So the same thing, a little bit wider on top, a little more narrow on the bottom. Just make sure your logo is facing up. You want the injured area to be pretty close to the middle of it. Okay, same thing with our knee. You want to be pretty centered. Wherever their main pain is, you want to try and get the main pain in the middle of our hamstring or quad, or sorry, pain in the middle of the sleeve. Does that make sense? Okay. So nice and stretchy, pretty durable. Um, these can be washed. Same thing with our calf sleeves, our knee sleeves, whatever it might be. Preferably air dried. Um, so otherwise too much heat in the dryer will cause it to lose its elasticity. So they can be washed, preferably washed cold and hand dried. Okay. So you can practice fitting those type of thing too. I did grab several different sizes. The only thing I ask though, too, when you guys are running here practicing that if things are in a box, make sure they get in the same correct box so that we can keep our mediums and our mulers or brand and sizes together. So I got a couple of the um, Mueller's, got some Protec, and I also have some McDavid's. So you can even kind of compare and contrast, like, oh, this is a medium in McDavid, but this is a medium in um, Mueller. So you can kind of see both size differences. Okay. Uh, thigh pad and hip pointer pad. So uh, thigh pad, usually we get some type of contusion. You get repetitively hit within your quad. Soccer players get a lot. Um, basketball players get it quite a bit. Football players will get it some too, but they usually have some built-in pads into their pants type of thing. Like I said, most commonly I see it in our um, soccer and our basketball players. Running around, someone's cutting up, coming off of a screen, all of a sudden the opponent's knee dries up, hits them into the quad or the thigh, okay? If it's happening repetitively and it's not healing, we're gonna have to provide some type of extra padding or protection. Um, so we're talking about soccer and basketball. A lot of times you can buy compression shorts that have extra padding in them. If they're comfortable with that, go for it. Or you can make your own pads. I see this one can be used either for a thigh pad or a hip pointer. So once again, we're using our good old um, donut pad technique and just adding a little bit of extra padding to the outside. So wherever it's at, sticking it on there, wrapping it around either with an ace wrap or sheer light or something that's going to hold it. If they have tight enough um, thigh pads or thigh um, uh, spandex, spandex underneath that are long enough, they can just stick it inside of those too. Okay, so whatever is going to be most comfortable. So those are for thighs. And then probably about the same thing as you're going to do for a hip pointer. Okay, so our hip bone on the side here usually gets hit. We see this a lot more in football. Uh, diving, catching, and they're falling onto their hip. Hip pointer is basically a bruise of the bone. Okay, Same thing, if it happens repetitively and we're not allowing it to heal, we're applying some type of padding to protect the area. Usually some type of donut pad, wider or thicker foam to cover those areas onto our hip. And then we're gonna use our hip spica to wrap them on and hold them on. Okay. And that was what we'll go over next. There are two hip spikers. Okay. Um, or you can go ahead and purchase a harder sell pad. Obviously, this is probably more, I pulled this from football, so more than likely it's going to be for a football player. Once again, either stick inside the pants, stick inside the sliding shorts or whatever it might be, or they can stick it right on, wrap it up. I said it's going to be a little bit more heavier duty of something depending on your athlete and depending on what sport that they're playing. Okay. So you can try and look at some of those. Um, last two is our hip adduction groin wrap and our hip, hip abduction flexor wrap. Okay. So this time I'll have you go ahead and just kind of smooth your shorts out a little bit. I'll go over top of your shorts. So we're going to have a person. <laughs> 
You're going to have somebody in what's called a May West position, which is hands on their hips, out of the way a little bit. And then this one we're going to have whichever um, affected leg is coming forward. Okay. Anytime we have an adductor or a groin strain, we are taking their femur and we're rotating them internally. Okay, by turning them interiorly, um, our groin or adductors don't have to work as hard. Okay, anytime we have a hip flexor strain, we are actually going to pull them externally. Okay, and give them a little external and adductor or flexor pull with it. Okay, so I'm going to do a groin wrap first. So no matter what, we're starting around the leg. Same thing, I'm going to do my little tail wrap up. Okay, so I'm taking an internal rotation. So I'm coming up around the waist. Same thing here, I'm tucking her in and we're pulling internally and getting that internal rotation. And you're just alternating those every other time. Okay. Um, same thing, you want to try and get your wrap to end and then the front or on the side. I'm probably not going to get around his waist again. So I'm just going to go around the leg one more time. Same thing, we're going to end here. I'm just going to take my shear light, wrap around a couple of times, make sure this tail stays. Okay, so that's for a hip flexor, or sorry, adductor strain. Adductor or groin strain. So if we were going to do a hip flexor, then we just do it opposite, both shoulders. Thank you. So, same position, but now I'm just going to pull the other way. So I'm pulling my wrap the other way. So now I'm going external. Same thing, I'm going to get my tail up here. Now I'm externally rotating and pulling up around the waist. I'm just repeating that. These are also called hip spikas. And then depending on what the injury is, is what direction you're going to pull. I won't get around another time. So I'm going to end up laterally. Okay. Cool. And with this one, they'll feel a little bit of a hip pop with them. When they're running, walking, moving. They're going to feel that elastic band. <laughs> <laughs> Try and pull them up with it. Okay. All right. Practice, see, try on. I'll get this guy wrapped up here too. But, so yeah, everything is here. I don't need to leave it on the table. So hopefully I didn't take over too much of your guys' space. 